1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York. Aerosmith coming to town next week. Yes, that's crazy. Are we going to get Steven Tyler, our pal, our buddy in the studio maybe next week, hopefully, for a quick visit, maybe a phone call? That would be nice. You never know. You never know who, who's going to stop on by our show from day to day. Yeah. It's Anthony, and uh, I'm Sean Mullins, and thanks for listening <laughs> to us today. <laughs> what was that about last night? We went to go see uh, Mellencamp at the Bowery Ballroom, and he rocked. It was so cool. Yeah, it was cool. Definitely sounded good, man. Uh, you he know, hasn't lost anything. I kind of had a problem though. I I was uh, paying attention to John's wife more than John last night. She's cute. Oh, man. Wow, man. a knockout. Yes, a knockout. Some guy walks up to uh, Oaf and goes, "Hey, uh." Heard you on, uh, what, PLJ or something? I don't even know what station he was yeah, talking about. Yeah, some station. I don't know. I heard you this morning. It's like, what? Yeah, that was you, right? What? What are you even talking about? You're Sean Mullins, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, great. Yeah, I'm Sean Mullins. Whatever like, it takes uh, to get the chick, I guess. <laughs> I mean, so I tried to work that last night. It didn't work too well. wasn't working for you. No, not at all. But no. uh, got to say hi to everyone we met at the Bowery Ballroom last mm -hmm. night. Treated us real nice, and it was yeah. really cool. Had a good time. Yes, we did. And now, today, we got a pretty wild show here. We're going to do a couple hours in the studio, and then we're going to get our butts down to Tower Records, uh, Lincoln Square. That's Broadway and 66th uh, mm -hmm. for John Mellencamp's in-store. Yeah. He's going to be performing live. We're going to put that on NEW, and we're going to do the rest of our show live down there. So please stop on by and say hi. Yeah, we want to see uh, some of the people that have been listening to this fine program. Yeah, we really do. We do. It's time to meet some of you guys. It's time to get out. They're finally letting us out of here. It took four months. Yeah. So, all right. All right. Good. We're Good. ready to rock. Great. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, people, what? People better be kind. You know they're not going to be kind. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah. We've dealt with this in the past. Yeah, I guess. All right. But if you got something today, 212-757-1027, fax line, 212-957-WNEW. Actually, the first fax to come through. <laughs> Look at that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That's pretty funny. And we got the instant feedback all set and ready to go. Just click on our pictures through the WNEW website, and you can whip off an email right here to us in the studio. On the way are our pal John Mellencamp, and we'll also throw in the Bare Naked Ladies. Stay there. 1027 WNEW, the rock of New York with Foreigner, Sophie and Anthony. Yankees look great last night, huh? Great. Indians don't even have a chance. They're playing at 4 o'clock today. We'll be peeking uh, at the game as we do our little show here. Five runs in the first inning. I loved it. David Wells, is is he your type of pitcher or what, Anthony? It was in the paper today that, you know, before the game, he's out drinking and partying with all the stars in New York yeah. and stuff. And then he goes out there, strike, 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 strike. It's great. He's a, a true man right there. I like the uh, Indians pitcher being relieved of his duties there. And then the fans. The fans. You, you got to love Yankee fans. Uh, yeah. Just lambasting the guys who's walking to the dugout. Except for the dorks behind home plate with the cell phones. Yeah, what's that all about? Yeah, I know exactly what it's all about. They're calling, like, uh, you know, home and and going, check us out behind home plate. See us with our cell phones? Look at us. We're on TV. <laughs> Idiots. Just sit there and enjoy the game. Did you see that? I saw that. Yeah. Well, we got Coney today. Oh, it's yeah. all over. Come on. What are we playing in the series? Debbie from Brooklyn wants to hear the Drowned Cuban Drown song. Mmm. That's a nice. Uh, we could do that. Touching melody. Yeah. The faxes are coming like crazy here. <laughs> I love this one. Yeah, I want you to describe this one, Anthony. Well, Opie, it's a, a drawing of a huge giant Pop Tart <laughs> with uh, you and I broadcasting from the top of it. <laughs> and I'm saying, well, Opie, we finally made it to the top of our profession. <laughs> and you're uh, saying, yeah, this is great. Really great, Anthony. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm holding the sign. Listen to Op and Act 1027. And you got the wacky horn, and it's just going honk, yeah. honk, honk, honk. Yeah, if you weren't listening yesterday, um, the promotional staff here at uh, NEW uh, approached us 
Yeah. They approached us with a couple of great ideas this uh, week. One was the Mellon Camp broadcast, which we're doing starting at 5. Uh -huh. Tower Records is Lincoln Square. And the other uh, proposal was broadcasting live from the large, the world's largest Pop-Tart that is making an appearance in New York in the near future. Wow, we were informed, Opie, yes, that the world's giant, uh, largest Pop-Tart is coming to New York. Yeah. And they want us to broadcast from it. <laughs> Just... And I said, if in my broadcast career I'm ever broadcasting next to giant pastry, yeah. shoot me. Exactly. Could you just shoot me? Would you broadcast from the world's largest strudel, Anthony? Is oh, that well, something mm, down your alley, you think? Hmm, I don't know. Toaster strudels, yes. Yeah. I might, I might. Maybe, maybe a pudding pops. Maybe the world's largest bagel. Would you broadcast live from that, maybe? That would be great. Dare to dream. <laughs> Gonna broadcast. <laughs> they just don't know us yet. That's okay. That's yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Opie and Anthony will not be broadcasting from the world's largest pop tart. Largest pop tart. It's just not our thing. Actually. Here it is, Opie. Yeah. You know how many pounds of flour and fruit filling it took to make this pop tart? Let's talk to the baker over here. Come on, come bring him over as we broadcast live from the world's largest pop tart. <laughs> Opie. Yeah. Opie, take the cinder block and crush my skull. <laughs> Could you just crush my skull? <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. <sighs> Come on. But at least the listeners are having fun with this. They're sending in their faxes of us broadcasting from the world's largest Pop-Tart. If you want in on that, fax line is 212-957-WNEW. Shan't be near a giant Pop-Tart. I've been in radio a really long time now. I don't yeah. think I've ever had to do any of these stupid events. Like where you got to go buy a giant pop tart. Right. We Here it is. It's the biggest spaghetti eating contest. <laughs> We're going to be in Central Park tomorrow to uh, uh, watch the competition of people that have to eat spaghetti, Opie. Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> Isn't that wax zane horrific, Opie? Oh, a spaghetti eating contest. <laughs> Unbelievable. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, I don't think if you listen to our show, it's kind of not what we're into. No, no. We'll, we'll like broadcast on the, the world's largest boobs or something. Yeah, but... that I'd be willing to look into. Yeah, of course we would. Oh, but it's the world's largest vagina. <laughs> we're actually going to be entering it. Fantastic. <laughs> A lot. Uh, I think you're. I think you're hurting the promotion guy's feelings now, Anthony. Cut ne it out. Next, next promotion. We we dig the melon camp today. That's going to be fun. Yes. We interact with uh, the audience a little bit. John Mellencamp going to play down there at Tower Records. It's going to be fun. Yeah. If you want to bring your pop tarts by the broadcast today, that'd be fun. Melon camp gig, fun. Yeah. Giant pastry. Uh, stupid. <laughs> okay? I think we're, we've we've settled this. You're hurting his feelings, dude. It's the only way, really, it gets through. Yeah. You know, we have to uh, uh, set a standard right. for the show. Right. Of which what is our huge standard? strudel is not part of. What is the standard for our show? Do we know that yet? Uh, I can't say definitely what it is, but I know what it isn't. Giant Pop-Tart! And we got someone on the line that actually saw the giant pop tar. We'll talk oh, to them next. Oh. So I think people are going to want to stick around. The Rock of New York, 1027, WNEW. It's Opie, it's Anthony. On the phone line, we got Ed from Columbia. He's been to the world's largest pop tart, Ed, and he wants to give us a little report here. Ed! Yo, buddy. What's up? <laughs> so I saw the pop tart. It's in town already? I saw the world's largest Pop-Tart. It was at Madison Square Garden Monday. Really? I made Sean Mullins pose next to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I did it? Why? Well, he saw it and he lost his appetite, so I saved money. I didn't have to buy him breakfast. There you go. It's a bunch of Pop-Tarts put together. It's a bunch of them put together? Yes. Under they... the guise that it's one giant Pop-Tart? Yes. So it's not even a real giant Pop-Tart? You can't quote me on that. It's a scam? I didn't say that. It's a scam. I didn't ah. Say the world's largest pop tart is a scam, everyone. It was a lot of post pop tarts, though. If we're gonna appear next to the world's largest pop tart, I want it to be the world's largest pop tart. Well, if you put the frosting on it, it'll look like a big pop tart. Clever ruse. Now, how big is the world's largest pop tart? Ed? It was big. Well, that ain't gonna help us. It was big. I'm it had to be about 20 feet wide and at least 40 feet long. 
<laughs> it was unbelievable. It, and <laughs> the worst thing was, I ran to Kmart. They didn't even have a toaster big enough to heat it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're a wacky head. Well, that's what happens when you're at the garden. You leave the garden and you want to go to Kmart. So, did you enjoy uh, the world's largest pop tart? I I got a good picture of it. Was there an admission? No admission. Wow, free! And there were walking pop tarts who said hi to to my. <laughs> See, we would actually probably have to dress up in the pop tart costume. Yeah. Well, to greet the Jersey, people yeah. as they look at the world's largest pop tart. Actually, I think the tart. I think the tart you're looking for are further west. So were people just standing around going, "Wow, that's a there real was, big pop tart." There were people there. Yeah. There was a lot of people oh, checking oh. out the pop tart. The smiles on the faces of the children. Yes. Oh. That's who really gets into the giant pop tart, you know. First, they satiate your eyes, <laughs> then they satiate your belly. Oh, what kind of drugs you on, Ed? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. It's the pasta. All right, Ed. We're going to see you at Melon Camp later. See you in an hour. All right, cool. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <sighs> there he goes, Ed from Columbia. We are not doing a broadcast from the giant pop tart. No, I know. I think it's pretty clear at this point. I not. think so. But we will be broadcasting live from Melon Camp at Tower Records. Yes. Lincoln Square. We're walking down there, what, at 5 o'clock? Uh huh. Do we have to walk there or, or are we going to take a cab? How are we going to get there? I don't know. I, no I, one ever... Uh, I kind of liked your idea of just doing a march, an Al Sharpton march. We're going to march to Tarek. <laughs> See, John Mellencamp. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Al. Yeah. We're going to start the march at the Apollo Theater. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Johnny Lang, lie to me. It's Sophie and Anthony. Coney looking good in the first inning. No score as the Yanks take on the Indians at the stadium. I think everyone knows that by now. Uh huh. What do you got on the instant feedback, Anthony? Well, uh, um, we got a, uh, somebody not too happy with us, I guess. What else is new? It's John, Eatontown, New Jersey. Took the time to write, um, you guys have balls. No brains, but balls. You crack on Scott Muni, yet you're not worthy to wipe his ass. Now, that's not true because Scott so said I was doing a great job wiping his ass. <laughs> so, so, you know, John. You crack on Rocky Allen. You two fools wish you had his ratings. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for you two clowns to get canned. I figure it will be by the first of the year. Face it, you two blow an admiring fan. That's great. You want to have uh, uh, listeners predict when we're going to get canned? That could be another little fun contest we could start. Yeah, okay. He's saying he's saying by the first of the year. Because we simply don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so who gets canned first, uh, us or Clinton? Yeah. All right. That could be a little side bet. Yeah. So, all right. All right. Thank you, John. Thank that, you. Thanks, John. That hurt. Ouch. Ow. That'll leave a bruise. Oof. Hey, Oof. Uh, we got to head out of here soon, Anthony. Yes, we do. We're kind of excited. It's our first... Uh, Live appearance, I guess. We're going over to uh, Lincoln Center, Lincoln Lincoln Square, whatever you like to call it. Tower Records over there, 66 and Broadway. John Mellencamp's going to be there for the in-store. I hear it's already a zoo. And me and Anthony are hopping out of here in about a half hour. We're going to do the rest of our show from there from like 5 to 8. Mellencamp's playing, and we're going to put the whole thing on the radio for you. Great. So if you're in the area, please stop by and say hi. We want to see what you guys are all about. I hope John shows up. Yeah, that would be cool. That last email. There. Yeah. All right. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, the latest from the Goo Goo Dolls. That slide off Dizzy Up the Girl. It's Opie and it's Anthony. You know. And you watch some weird TV. Why? Well, when I came to pick you up today, you were watching an old episode of Real People. <laughs> There's some uh, CBS channel that's on. I don't know what it is. It's like EOP? Yeah. I don't know. I I don't know half the channels I got. Yeah, it's. I think it's called EOP and they just do old CBS shows or something like that. Yeah. And uh, real people was on. <laughs> just a, that show used to be like so popular. Yeah, I don't and know you watch why. it now. I don't know why we were watching it back then because we ended up sitting down and watching it for a half hour, and we were we were cracking on this show really bad. Yeah, it was pretty awful. The, I, the one segment with uh, the 13 year old model. Yeah, that's like a 20 year old show, right? Yep. So she didn't make it, obviously. I guess, I guess not. She's no. not in modeling anymore. This girl that used to, you know, after school, get all dollied up for uh, these major photo shoots right here in Manhattan at 13 years old. Yeah, yeah. it was like kitty porn. It was like kitty porn. Yeah, and then they go back and Sarah Purcell is sitting there with the other guy. Not not Skip. Skip other, Henderson, right? Yeah. Yeah. The other older guy. 
He's like, I would never let my daughter dress up like that. <laughs> you just, and they go, why did we ever watch this show? Yeah. Well, you got to explain the, the tragic segment. Yeah, there was one of those every week, too. There's some guy who was, was building a Viking ship. <laughs> <laughs> and he was going to sail it to Norway. Well, the deal was, like, he was hanging out with his buds. Uh, and over coffee, he decided that he wanted to make a, a, a genuine... Viking ship, and yeah. he wanted to sail it back to Norway. Yeah, and he was uh, like seventy years old. Yeah, and the whole town thought it was a great idea. This was a very bored town, so he spent like four years building his Viking ship that he was going to sail to Norway. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then what happened to it? <laughs> well, of course, we find out he has leukemia <laughs> as he's building this thing, and they show everything, you know. And Sarah Purcell is there and asking everybody questions about how. How, you know, this guy has built this Viking ship, and they're all uh, behind him. And they launch it and christen it. It was just a touching scene for Sarah. And then Anthony called it. He goes, watch, the guy didn't make it. It's got to be. Right. That the guy can't have sailed this ship. Yeah. And uh, they fade out to Sarah on the stage with the one spotlight on her. And she's like, like crying her eyes out. We're sorry to report that. Bob never got to realize his dream. <laughs> he died, but his family is still continuing coping. He can... <laughs> and we were roaring laughing. We were laughing. We lost it. It was so fake. All right, Sarah, you go there for a day with your camera, and you build up such a, a, a friendship with this guy that, you know, a, a year or two years later, she's crying her eyes out. Yeah. That, that the guy didn't make it. He didn't make it. Viking voyage. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. It was horrible. So, And then we're Real flipping people. around, and then uh, we saw the advertisement for the workout stick. Yeah, it's gotten down to that. Actually, it's the workout blade, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, you always said that someday there's going to be an infomercial for a stick, and they'll just call it the workout stick and charge, you know, five easy payments of twenty nine ninety five, and and it's just a stick. But they tell you how to use it. Yeah. It's not a stick. It's an eight-station workout. <laughs> and why is a stick? And they're just fooling around with this silly thing, and supposedly it's getting them in shape. Yeah. I can't was... believe people sit at home and, you know, are convinced that this is going to help them and they're going to order it. But, yeah, it looked just like a bow that you use for a bow and arrow without the string on it. Mm -hmm. And they hold it and shake it. Yeah. What is that going to do? That's ridiculous. And the guy's explaining, well, the opposite motion of your muscles as you swing this back and forth. You, okay, as you dig your m money out of your wallet and send it to me, you're building up your wrist muscles. Unbelievable. Yeah, people buy anything. And then we switch the channel. There's some really bad TV on during the day. Yes. And uh, there was an advertisement for a, a clock. <laughs> That every hour was a, no a different bird noise. A different bird noise for every hour. It was uh, uh, the Audubon clock. <laughs> well, yes, at 1 o'clock, you hear a cardinal. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, it's 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's great. <laughs> ah, ah, oh, it must be 5. It's a crow. And they're actually selling this thing. We were sitting there in amazement. The thing that got me couch. was... The certificate of authenticity that comes with the clock. Right. For what? <laughs> what, that it's a clock? Yeah. It's a clock that makes noise, like a bird. Yeah. It'll teach your children the sounds of birds. Who needs to know that? Yeah, what, 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 you know? <laughs> so your son could get beat up in school? Yeah, really. <laughs> That's a cardinal. <laughs> I'm going to speak. Well, this is a fist. <laughs> Boom, you know? Come on. Who are you kidding? I'm swearing off TV. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with whole celebrity skin. It's Opie and Anthony. we got to step aside. We're heading out the door. I mean, we're still on the radio, but we're going to do the rest of our show uh, from Lincoln Center mm -hmm. at the Tower Records. Mellencamp's going to be on hand for the in-store, so uh, we'll be broadcasting live. Come on by, and then we're going to put John Mellencamp on the radio. He'll perform a few numbers for everyone. Yeah. It's going to be quite exciting. So Our we, first outing, our first field trip away from home. It's kind of special. Yeah, the boss is going to put us on the little uh, short yellow school bus, <laughs> wait outside for us and wave as we cry, as we drive away. Actually, our boss, who doesn't like, doesn't like farts. Yeah. He's actually uh, going there with us. Yeah. I think he's got those leashes for us. 
You know, oh, you, so we don't get out of control? Yeah, when you walk around, you know, Midtown, you see the moms where they have their kids on leashes. Hold them a leash? I think he's got a couple leashes for me and you. Uh, I want the short bus, and I want to wear a hockey helmet <laughs> so I could smash my head against the window, <laughs> make faces at people. That's how we should have showed up at Tower Records, on a short bus. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Come on, let's face it. We all look when one, you know, drives up next to us. You don't sound like that on the radio. <laughs> it's the, the processing. It makes us sound better. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm waiting for the short bus. <laughs> okay, very good. Did you ever have to take a short bus? Okay. Um, no. At any point? Ever? Yeah. I think once, like, the regular school bus broke down. Yeah, that's then, what happened to me. And then what happens is they bring the short bus, and yeah. then everyone's convinced that you belong on the short bus. Yes. And you're just like, oh, God, <laughs> I can't get out of this thing. <laughs> Pulls up in front of the school, and you're getting out of the short bus. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing on the short bus? <laughs> you retard. Hey, you're a retard. Yeah, kids could be cruel. Yeah. So could adults. <laughs> We're teaching them you that, I guess, huh? <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. <laughs> this mess will continue from Tower Records, Lincoln Center. On the way, in the meantime, we've got uh, some Pearl Jam. I think we'll do some police next, too.